What's up guys, Greg Benz. Are you looking for a way to add that dreamy, nostalgic film feeling to your images so that they pop online? In this tutorial, you'll learn how you can easily do that using my free web sharpening utility for Photoshop. To get started, we just need to open up our source image, which I've already done, and then head up to Filter, Web Sharpen, or if you've set a keyboard shortcut, you can use that, of course. If you don't already have my web sharpening utility, you can download it for free using the links below this video. Once you've installed it, you can then open it, we'll click in it, and make sure you've got version 1.2 running. That's the version I'm using for this video. I'm not going to go through all of what's happening here. I've already done that in a previous video that I'll show at the end of this video. But what I do want to quickly note is that the purpose of this utility is to take our high resolution original layered file and squeeze it down into a beautiful looking JPEG that you can share on Instagram, Facebook, wherever it goes. So in this case, I'm going to output a 1080 pixel wide image instead of the original 3600 pixels with high quality JPEG compression, 150% sharpening amount. We're automatically going to get the sRGB color space, all the things we need done to make the image look great online. Now I want to go to grain, and this is where we're going to add the film look that's going to give us that beautiful, nostalgic, dreamy quality that helps set this image apart for us. In the original, you never got grain, so you basically had an amount of zero. You didn't have any options here, and this is what you always got. Now, if you set something other than zero, you're going to get some grain added to the image. So 10 to 15% is usually a good choice. We have size and roughness amounts. I'm gonna leave them at their defaults here and I'll show you what they do in just a moment. At this point, we could go ahead and click on Sharpen and it would output our new image to the desktop where it's specified to go. But notice when you hover over Sharpen, we have an option to hold down the controller command key. And if we do that and then click on Sharpen, instead of saving to the desktop, it's gonna leave it open for us as a new file that lets us control the process in a more granular way. So we can go, we can change the grain, which is applied through Camera Raw Filter, and we can change the sharpening, which is applied on this top layer, but not the bottom layer. So if I zoom in a bit here to take a look, you can see if I turn the top layer off, here's the not sharpened version versus on top is the sharpened version. And of course, we're at 300% here, so it's gonna look a little bit over sharpened at this view, but you can just clearly see the sharpening here. So I could paint on this layer mask to knock back, for example, the sharpening on the eyebrows or the lips. Let's go ahead and quickly do that. So I'm gonna just get a, smaller brush and I've got kind of a darker gray here. So I'm not totally eliminating the sharpening. I'm just kind of knocking it back, which I think is appropriate here. I don't want to have zero sharpening, just less sharpening in those areas. And see kind of before and after on the lips, it just looks a little bit smoother and nicer. Having done that, my sharpening I think is good to go, but I want to optimize the grain. In this case, I think I have a little bit too much grain and I want to play with these settings. So we're going to go to the camera raw filter. If we double click it, we can go to the effects tab. If you're on an older version of camera raw, this may look a little different. It could be in a different place. And if you're on CS6, then a different approach will be applied. It'll be a, a noise setting if you're on CS6. We'll change the grain amount, size, and roughness. So same sliders we had in the pop-up interface just a moment ago, but now we can visually and interactively change things. So I'm going to bring up the amount a bit to just see what's going on and then we can optimize the size and roughness and then we'll finalize the grain at the end. So we want to have enough amount so we can actually see what the next two sliders are doing. If we take the size to the left, you get much finer particles of grain. If we slide it to the right, you get much larger ones, which has the effect of kind of softening things up a bit. And let me zoom back just a little bit. 400% is probably too much. You see with small grain to large grain, I would say in general, the larger grain looks really nice if you want a softer portrait kind of look. And so 90% or so is probably a great choice. I'm gonna leave it 100 here. For other images, the default 25 is a good choice. I wouldn't usually go to lower values than 25. I think it starts to look a bit noisy in that case. Next up is the roughness, which is the uniformity of the grain. If you slide to the left, it gets more regular and uniform. And I think it looks a little bit pixelated here. If you slide it to the right, it gets a little bit blotchy and softer. So while I think that increasing roughness can be great for some images, I don't think it's great for the skin in this particular case here. So I'm gonna stick with the default, which was back in the middle at 50%. I think the overall quality here looks nice, looks like film. I just think there's too much right now. So I'm gonna knock back the amount to finalize things. Usually 10 to 15% is a good choice. 15 looks pretty good. We drop back to 10. I think that's looking pretty nice. I'm gonna go split the difference right around 12. 
And then you can go turn that off and on to just preview with no grain and with grain. You see how nicely that just looks like more realistic skin. And again, keep in mind we're at 300%. So you're going to be actually viewing the image at 100%. So it's a very subtle effect, but it really does have a nice quality to the finished image here. So click OK. And we've got great film grain on the face. We've got the sharpening looking great. There's one last thing I want to do. And notice that the background starts to look a little bit noisy because we've added this film grain. If we turn off the camera raw filter, you see what happens if there's no film grain. Now it looks very smooth versus hitting Control Z to undo that. You just see with grain, without grain, with grain. That's kind of noisy. So what I'd like to do is reduce the amount of grain in the background, but leave it on the, our subject here. So to do that, what we want to do is use our smart filter mask. Anything that's painted black here is going to change the visibility of the filter itself. So anything that's black and the smart filter mask is going to hide the grain from our camera raw filter. So let me hit Command-0 to zoom back here. I'm going to go and create a quick selection. So W or the quick selection tool, I'll click and select the background here. If I hold down the Shift key, I get the plus cursor, I can add this. Holding down the Shift key again, I can add this. So I've got all three background areas selected, and now I can brush on these to darken them in this filter mask. So make sure it's selected with the brackets around it. Hit B for our brush. I need a larger brush for this. And then normally I would go and use black paint when I'm painting on a mask. But if I use black paint, then I might take the grain all the way to zero. And I don't want no grain. I just want less grain. If I have no grain at all, it won't look consistent with the rest of the image. So what I'd like to do, instead of setting black as my color, I'm going to set the, the minimum amount. So I set this to, let's say, 30 35% then I can't get any darker than 35%. I'm painting from white and I'll stop when I get to 35%. That's gonna prevent me from having no grain at all because I wanna keep a little bit. We'll click OK. And now with my brush, I'm just gonna quickly paint over these areas. I'm not worried about being overly precise. It's hard to see transitions with grain. And I trust my selection of my brush here. And let's take a look at our mask. I think I better even that up on the far edge there, make sure that's gone. But you can see now I've got full grain on the subject and then I've reduced it substantially in the surrounding background. Let's hit Command D to deselect and Z to zoom in. And let's just take a look at what we've got here. So we've got grain here and we've reduced the grain here. If we turn this off, we can see here it was with no grain and turn it back on. Here is our grain applied selectively via this mask. If I shift click on the mask, you can see there was all the grain being applied at full strength on the background, whereas without it, with Command Z, you see we've cleaned that up and it's just a nice looking transition. And again, we're at like 500% here, so you got to zoom back to something more like you know the 100% view, and that's a more realistic way of looking at it. You know, with it everywhere where it's a little bit noisy, versus with the improved mask, it looks much better. And at this point, I'm ready to save the image, but there's just one thing I want to note: I don't need to do it here. But if I had painted black on my layer mask and revealed something that had different values for the grain or the grain was applied, things could look a little bit funny. Let's zoom in and just take a look. If I were to go and paint black on my top mask here, so I'm going to just switch to the default black and white, get a smaller brush. And if this was blacked out, you see I'd be seeing through to the bottom layer here, which is not sharpened, but it has grain. And that's a problem. I want a consistent look here. So if you're removing sharpening in an area where we're also changing the grain, you need the same settings down below. So we could go and do the same painting on the mask. We'd make the same adjustment to the camera filter, but there's actually a much easier way. We'll just go and delete the camera filter. And it said, hold on the alter option key first, then click and drag to make a duplicate of our camera filter. If it simply moved from top to bottom, it's because you didn't hold down Option or Alt before you moved. If you click first and then you hit it, it's going to move. And then we can copy the mask as well. So don't hold down Alt or Option, then click and drag. And we'll say, yep, yeah, we want to replace this. And see how that's nicely cleaned things up because the background now has the exact same settings for the grain. And the sharpening here makes no difference. You can't see anything I painted on this top layer mask. You just how nicely that matches things up. So at this point, we're ready to save it. We just go back up to filter 
web sharpen or use the keyboard shortcut. And this will allow us to get to the web sharpening interface if we're going to use that to save our file. In this case, I'm going to zoom in a bit, just take a look at our settings. It's looking a, a bit noisy with the low quality. So I'm going to keep the quality up a little bit here to 90%. And now I've got a nice representation and I can just click save and save my output. And now click to this next video to learn more about how you can get the most out of this free web sharpening utility.